America has a homelessness crisis, and the progressive left is to blame. That's according to Seneca Scott, candidate for mayor in Oakland, California, who's described the situation in his city as Mad Max. He painted a portrait for us in his latest op-ed in Newsweek, highlighting its, quote, encampments in open-air drug markets that rival any third-world country, lined with countless tents, RVs, makeshift shacks, and hundreds of burned out and gutted vehicles of all shapes and sizes. Scott called out to the left's failure to solve this ongoing crisis, effectively leaving those unsheltered out on the streets and politically unhoused. Here to discuss how the Democrats' paltry housing policies are driving away voters from Team Blue is Oakland, California mayoral candidate Seneca Scott. Seneca, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. And a hey, listen, I am in Los Angeles. I am, I, I've been in the Venice Beach area for the last uh, about 10 years. So I see it for myself, the homelessness crisis and how it has just exploded over the years. So what do you think it is p- specifically? I would love to know this myself. What do you think it is that the progressive Democrats are doing that is making the situation worse or not helping the situation at all? That's a great question, Kim. So I would say the introduction may be a little slanted. It's not the progressive left's fault we have a homeless crisis. It is born of financial desperation, but that financial desperation has created conditions where people can no longer compete economically. And when people cannot compete economically, they begin to compete for more superiority. And that's the, the soldiers on the front line who are weaponized by by our elite who actually don't care much about us. So if you look at the actual policies that have led to um, this situation, you have to point to housing first policies and the relaxing of our drug laws. And it's a complicated situation because we know that the the drug school to drug pipeline, the drug war was a dismal failure. We know that the drug prices have taken a new escalation with fentanyl and the, the change in how methamphetamines are made. And now we're in a quagmire where we don't actually have existing laws or legislation that allow us to commit people who are mentally unstable, who are a danger to themselves. But as a matter of fact, 90% of Californians, as you guys probably know, want to see this happen. So I think it's a matter of political will and public will the public will is confused because we want to do good and we, we're well-meaning but our political will is really uh it's the big part right now and that's why i think the, where the progressive left is having an issue uh, let me ask you this it, I, about 25 percent of the homeless population across the country is seriously mentally ill 45 percent have some degree of mental illness i think i don't know about the kind of liberal left who runs california but the i think progressive leftists would say that part of the way to address this problem has to be about restoring the mental health network that was largely decimated in the 1970s and also addressing um the ongoing drug issues what do you think the right answer to this problem is if it's being framed as uh, a left a lefty failure the right doesn't have any answers as well. Mm. And that's the issue of why I think people need to start to look outside of these parties and look to their neighbors and take a grassroots approach to building back up our local politics. When you talk to neighbors across the political spectrum, especially in major cities, you find that we have a large overlap of the things that we want to see. We want public safety. We want quality education for our children so that they can compete in today's global society. And we don't want uh, our taxes to be wasted from people who then mock us and then shame us for wanting to see some some sort of change. So I think the right doesn't have any answers. The left has shown not to have any answers. They have good intentions, but you know what the saying is about good intention. And I think that we're seeing that play out right now in Oakland. So politically, I think the biggest thing we need to do is stop. You brought up a really good point about the, the Reagan era and getting rid of the, the, uh, the mental health. You know how many times I've heard that from activists? Hmm. How many times will we say we know what the problem is, 
But when you, uh, you challenge these activists to show proof of concept that they're actually drafting legislation or they're actually behind these things conceptually, and then you don't get the right answer. You get a, a forever moving goalpost, and housing first activists have moved that goalpost in Oakland to now the, the man is housing with no strings attached. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would push back a, li a little bit, um, even with Brianna, kind of what you were mentioning about progressive left versus liberal left here in California. And in my experience, and Seneca would love to get your perspective on this, but the progressive left out here actually has gone to almost an extreme with it, it seems, where the the they're advocating for the homeless population to stay where they are. You know, it's like, leave them alone. Why can't you just let them be? They're free, you know, they're people that deserve dignity and the dignity is to allow them to stay where they are, whereas the liberal left has actually tried to move them, wanted to move them or build, or uh, take them somewhere else. And we see activists actually show up and say, no, don't don't move them. Don't you dare like get them out of these parks. Like, how dare you? You're a terrible person for doing that. And then on the right, the problem, like what you're mentioning, Seneca, their solution is to criminalize, uh, you know, go back to criminalization. So actually, it's almost like the liberal left has almost the best of the three solutions, which is move them into housing. But they seem to get stopped on both sides, the progressive left and the right. The right saying, don't give them things. How dare you? And then the progressive left saying, leave them alone. Let them be. Let them be free the way they are. Seneca, what do you think of that? I so agree with that analysis. And it's very true. We had a situation that was exactly like that at a tennis court by Lake Mary that they wanted to redo for the public. And we had a homeless encampment in this tennis court for two years. At first, it was supported by the community because they had nowhere to go. Once the city actually got housing and a hotel available, the majority left. There were a few holdouts, and those holdouts didn't want to move because of the moral cause of them being able to live wherever they want. The activists came out in large, who were largely white, I organized a, a protest, a counter protest of families, mostly uh, black mothers and their children. And we played tennis right in front of those few remaining holdout encampments. And we forced them to admit that housing had been offered and they had refused it because they wanted to write to live wherever they wanted. And that was actually a turning point in Oakland for exposing some of these activists. We won over major housing activists who actually want to help because of that incident who saw that they were being led down a dangerous path. So this is a larger issue. Is you have, let's take Wood Street that's mentioned in, in my op-ed. If you go to Wood Street, there's about a lot of different communities. You have some people who are just completely shunned out. You have other places that call themselves intentional communities. And when you go there, most of them are actually shunned out too, but they have these quasi-socialistic fantasies of uh, anti-work or we're just going to do whatever we want. Um, but they're doing it on the shoulders of largely black, elderly, mentally ill, drug addicted black people who have not consented to this movement. And that's why I draw my personal line and I had to step up and say something against these, I don't like to call them activists, but against these, these performative um, you know, activists who are in Oakland, who really are contemptuous, I believe, of the black community, of poor people. And it, it, it's displaying itself in a very weird way. I don't have any other explanation for it, Cam. Yeah, I've done a, a lot of uh, reporting in my time about kind of lefty excesses. And certainly there, I'm sure there are some overreaches. I did a quick Google of uh, LA progressive groups. It seems like one called LA progressives adv uh, as advocating for building housing as a way to end homelessness. And in my experience, it's often liberals who are resisting building houses, ho housing for homelessness with an, and a NIMBY kind of push to say, I don't want these people in my neighborhood. So there certainly are bad actors on every right, side of this. Right. I really appreciate you um, spending the time with us today, Seneca. Thank you. Um, is that it? That, that is it. And we <laughs> okay. have more rising <laughs> after this.